Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Strzok. The name of this course is Greek and Roman Mythology. So glad you've decided to take it. Uh, welcome to the course, and uh, looking forward to reading some really great stories with you in the coming 10 weeks. Uh, this is a course where you'll need to be able to get online and access a video, which I see you've already done, so you've done the first part. Uh, some of the course will be me chattering and uh, sharing ideas that I have uh, in these video segments. Uh, a good bit of the time in the course is gonna be spent with you and smarter people like Homer, Aeschylus, Virgil, uh, reading their works uh, that uh, are gonna be the centerpiece of what our course is all about. There'll be a good bit of time in this course that is spent reading, and I think it will be a great pleasure. Uh, be sure definitely to give yourself enough time to do the reading. If you try to crash read it the night before, chances are you're not gonna like it. Uh, this is reading that's best done in small bits, uh, and give it the uh, time that it needs uh, to uh, speak to you in all the ways it's gonna be able to speak to you. We're also gonna have some quizzes and writing assignments, short quizzes, that'll be graded automatically by the computer, and then short writing assignments where you will uh, contribute your own ideas and also hear back from your peers, other people taking the course uh, that are gonna help us in the broader uh, scheme of group grading, which we're entering into here with Coursera. Uh, yeah, it's true, we'll have peer assessments in this class where uh, you'll tell each other what you think about the kind of writing work that you've done. Uh, we'll do our best to weigh in on that as well, uh, but there are tens of thousands of you, and there's only a few of us on the teaching staff. Uh, so you may not hear from us as directly as you would want to, uh, but you're surely gonna hear lots of smart things uh, from other people taking this course. Uh, the area in which that's most likely to happen is on the community forum. Anytime you have a contribution to make or a question about what's been going on in class, you can jump onto the community forum and you won't need to wait for one of us on the teaching staff to answer you on that forum. Uh, your, your question is gonna be answered by other people in the class. That's what's been happening with Coursera. We're creating, it's true, learning communities of people that are uh, sharing interests and sharing ideas, sharing questions, and also sharing answers. We're gonna be reading in this class about monsters. We're gonna read about heroes. We're gonna read about marriages gone right and wrong, family squabbles, massive architectonic, earth-changing wars, all kinds of things. But most of all, what we're gonna be reading about is the question of what it means to be human. Uh, sure, gods and monsters and animals are in this, these stories, uh, but what they're mostly there to do is to help us focus on what Greek myths tend to be most interested in, and that is uh, you and I as members of a very definitive species, a unique uh, 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 group of uh, organisms floating around in the, uh, on, the, on the surface of the earth and trying to make our way between uh, being born and dying. Uh, these stories give us a way to fill in all the stuff that comes in between. Um, we're going to be looking at this course in uh, some stories that have been told and retold for many generations. Uh, in fact, uh, they're some of the oldest pieces of cultural DNA uh, to survive in the evidence we have from the human past. They're also some of the most widely diffuse. These stories are so good and uh, uh, get stuck in the imaginations of so many peoples that over time they get made and remade in the images of later cultures who want to appropriate this early material and build it into their own cultural stuff. So learning these strands of human cultural DNA is gonna give you a window on a broad sweep of, what, uh, uh, of, of the human family and the different ways uh, that people in these groups have tried to answer very broad and important questions. Now you'll notice, uh, taking a look back, those of you who are paying attention, we're out in space. Isn't that exciting? And oftentimes, classes that have to do with mythology talk about myths floating around in space somewhere as though there's some abstraction uh, that uh, just kind of comes down to us on high. Uh, but in this course, this is actually about the only time we'll spend in space. Uh, mostly what we'll be doing is looking at where these myths come from. And when we wanna try to find out where they come from, uh, we don't always have specific answers, but we do know uh, that they come from the planet Earth, uh, they come from uh, to us in the form of human language, and they come to us spoken by specific human beings. People who are in our species, who over time have run into questions, have told stories, have offered answers, have told and retold uh, different versions of important tales that become uh, powerful for them at different points in their lives. Uh, that's the stuff that's gonna occupy us in this course. Uh, not so much uh, these environs uh, that, while spooky, uh, may not have too many answers to offer us. So what we're gonna look at uh, in this class is a particular 
uh, slice of the picture of ancient mythologies. Uh, we know mythologies from many different cultures across the old world. Uh, the Greeks and the Romans are who we're going to focus on in this class. Uh, and it will be a, a slice of what the larger picture of mythology is all about. Uh, but I hope you'll agree with me. It's a wonderful one with all kinds of interesting stuff in it. So um, we can start off with a relatively simple question. Uh, let's lay out in front of us the question of what is myth? Straightforward question. Its answer couldn't be more difficult. Uh, myth is one of those deep and uh, uh, valued, highly valued ideas uh, that uh, cultures uh, use uh, in order to try to figure out and describe the world. And like things like love or truth or beauty, the idea of myth is hot property. Uh, people care about it a great deal. They offer many different definitions of it. Some of those definitions are actually in direct conflict with each other. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it still uh, points to uh, something that endures over time despite all the conflicting definitions because people find having a category like this is for them extremely valuable. <coughs> Complex, yes important, absolutely, uh, maddeningly difficult to define, surely. Um, one thing I think that we'll find out is that myth actually operates as a kind of container into which people toss what is most valuable in their culture. And since people's valuations change over time, what gets tossed into the container of myth over time is going to change too. Now, we'll start with a couple of ideas, taking a look at modern English. The term myth uh, has lots of different definitions. Uh, let's start off with an obvious one. You might see a newscaster talk about, tune in at 5 o'clock today to the evening news, and we're going to explode the myths about topic X. And when someone in the contemporary public discourse talks like that, what they're saying is, we're going to show you something lots of people believe, and we're going to show that it's actually untrue. Myth is, by definition, a lie or something untrue that needs to be exploded and cleared away. But then there are other people who claim, no, 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 wait a minute. Myth is actually something that is true. And not only true, it is profoundly true. It's the most uh, deep and resonant kind of truth that a human being is capable of. Myth contains all of this stuff and passes it down from generation to generation. And people who talk about myth in this way probably don't just say myth. They say something like, myth with some extra aura of authority and meaningfulness around it. So the mythic, in this part of the English language at least, exists in a way that labels something deeply, profoundly true. So we already have a first incoherence. Is myth a lie, or is myth the most profound truth possible to human beings? Second incoherence, among the people that think myth has some truth to it, there are some that claim that myth has universal truths to it. So when we dig down deep into the hidden meanings in the stories we're going to be looking at, what we're going to reveal is the deep truth about something that is profoundly common and universal in the human family. There are others that claim, uh, if myth has truths in it, that myth is actually a window into specific cultural uh, uh, located truths. Truths that are located in space and time with specific peoples anchored to specific cultures. And when we dig down into the deep hidden meanings of myth, what we're really going to reveal is what it is to be a member of some specific culture. So if you really want to understand what it is to be Irish, or to be Native American, or to be from a Norse-based culture, or a South Asian culture, or an East Asian culture, what you need to do is dig deep down into the local myths of those peoples to get a window on what it is to be a member of that culture. So another incoherence that shows up. If myth's true, it's either uni true about universals, or it's true about cultural particulars. Most people are going to agree that it has something to do with the past. Myths took place in some earlier time. But again, this is never simple. Uh, if there are some people that talk about the past as a primitive area of irrationalist kind of fantasies and uh, a mentality that you know, maybe they would say is, thank goodness, been displaced by other more logical, reasonable ways of thinking. Uh, these people might toss up science as an, uh, a, a parallel formation to myth and talk about science as somehow displacing myth as a way of looking at the world. But then there'll be other people that talk about a primitive idea of myth, and they'll embrace that. They'll talk about primitive in a very good way, saying that it means something uh, is primal, has to do with a core reality, some fundamental or rudimentary part of what it is to be human is going to be revealed when we look at myths. So among those that think that myths 
are true. There are some that will think that the um, uh, uh, there there are. Uh, sorry, there are some that will think that myths are lies. Some will think they're true. Some that think among the truths will think that they're truth about true about some specific culture. Others about general human phenomena. And then finally, this final incoherence. Uh, some will embrace its primitiveness as being a wonderful thing. Some will embrace. Uh, some will try to eschew it as being something that is negative that we should at all uh, at all uh, in, in all ways try to stay away from. Now, I'm going to be careful in this course to uh, lay out a couple of disclaimers when they come up. The first thing I wanted to underline, and I'll make reference to this later on too, is that the myths that we're going to look at are sometimes they're PG, sometimes they're G, sometimes they're NC-17 or R or even worse. We're going to look at some nasty stuff. There's awful things that are going to happen from uh, uh, illicit kinds of sexual relationships. There's going to be uh, explicit violence. Uh, some of it's going to be very disturbing. And I say this because some of the younger folks out there might be tuning into a mythology class. Sure, that's the kind of thing that you see coming out of Hollywood, and it seems to be pretty tame and safe. Uh, what we're going to look at, look at in this class is anything but tame and safe. Uh, so if you're a younger person, be sure to ask your parents if what you're viewing is OK. Uh, high school and beyond, you're probably fine. Uh, but uh, I say this because I'm not sure I would want my own son, uh, who's younger than that, uh, watching, uh, taking this course. Now, um, to get uh, started on the conversation about what myth is all about, we've laid down some general things that are floating around in contemporary culture. But you might ask yourself, well, what did the Greeks themselves think about myth? Well, in fact, uh, they did have a word for it. You'll see behind me, muthos. Some of you will recognize right away, look, it already looks like the English word myth. And in fact, it looks identical uh, to the German word uh, for mutos and for an Italian and a French word. All of these contemporary words are scooped out of a Greek root uh, that spelled in these characters uh, looks like this, mutos. And uh, those contemporary ideas are built on this Greek idea. So let's have a look at what the Greeks themselves thought a myth was, a mutos was. First of all, they thought for uh, the oldest definition we have is that it's speech. Anything that comes out of your mouth could count as a muthos. Any sound or word that comes out of a person's mouth could count as a muthos. Secondly, and a little bit later in Greek history, the term comes to label a specific kind of speech. It's a speech that is a narrative story. It has a beginning, middle, and end, a plot, characters, things that you care about, um, stuff that you want to hear. Okay, becomes an idea of a story. Then later, it becomes known as a specifically false story. So the connotation changes slightly to mean a tall tale, something that's surely not true, the kind of story that people like to tell, uh, but that doesn't have any underlying truth to it. Then finally, even later in Greek history, um, uh, uh, some thousand years after uh, some of the poets we're going to be reading uh, at this time, uh, there are people that start to turn to this idea of myth as being, yes, a tall tale, but one that has some underlying deeper truth to it. If you look down beneath the surface, there'll be some subterranean messages that are ready to come out if you dig a little deeper and look at them a little bit more closely. So this is a good place for us to uh, get started. We've had a look at what uh, myth is uh, in a general way from a context of a contemporary perspective, from an ancient perspective. Um, and what we've really framed is the idea that myth is going to be much more than some single simple definition is going to allow us to define. And all these different, sometimes even conflicting ideas about myth are going to be present in our course. I'm not going to try to talk you out of any, one, any of these, and I'm not going to try to necessarily even really clean up the picture all that much from the messy one you see here. It's just we're all going to get to know over uh, the course of time uh, a little bit more about how this messy picture uh, works and what all its little uh, areas are all about. Uh, until we uh, get to that point, uh, there's lots of us. Uh, uh, lots of time out there for us to uh, do some reading on our own. Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of that for you. And I look forward to, in the coming weeks, reading some of the most amazing stories that I know um, with you as we move through the course material.